Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 225 of the Healthy Skin Show. Today, we're going to be diving into an interesting topic. So, have you ever heard of a substance called lanolin? Most people have not, unless they somehow end up with an allergy to it. And even then, mistakes can be made about what it's in, meaning that you could still be coming in contact with it regularly without knowing it. And that's a big problem because if you have a true IgE allergy to something, it's best to avoid it since it can make things like eczema worse if it's a trigger for you. Typically, this allergy would be identified by an allergist through patch testing. Testing, though sometimes some people may put two and two together themselves. Either way, it's worth considering since you can come into contact with this specific allergen both externally and internally. So what's lanolin? Lanolin is produced by the sebaceous glands of sheep to help protect their wool, but it specifically differs from human sebum in that it lacks triglycerides. It's extracted from the wool after the sheep is shorn, so there is no direct harm done to sheep in order for us to have lanolin as an ingredient that's often added to various creams, other skincare products like cracked lip products and nipple creams for breastfeeding moms, and even oral supplements. More on that in a moment. That said, there are ethical concerns about how sheep are raised. So if that's something that you care about, you can read more about it in the show notes. I have a great article linked up for you. Now, before you panic, a lanolin allergy is not very common, but it does happen. Older papers like the one I found from 1998 claim that a lanolin allergy is, quote, a myth created mainly by overzealous professional patch testers, end quote. But we know that that isn't true. As more people have become sensitized to lanolin, especially when looking at research, showing an increase in sensitization between 2004 and 2015. According to a study published in 2019, a lanolin allergy impacted up to 1.2% of those in their test group. And another paper suggests that a lanolin allergy may be worth exploring for children struggling with eczema. Also, if you seem to react to wool clothing, it could be a possible but not guaranteed sign that lanolin could be a problem for you. In terms of skincare, lanolin is considered to be an emollient and can help your skin retain water by up to 20 to 30% but you can develop contact dermatitis to it. And as previously mentioned, an allergy to it could make your eczema worse. So there are other names as well for lanolin, and they include things like wool alcohols, lanolin alcohols, Americol L101, wool fat, anhydrous lanolin, wool wax, wool grease. I have a list over in the show notes for you, as well as an official website that has all of these different names. So you'll want to check out the show notes for this episode because there's a lot linked up there. To be honest with you, lanolin is in a lot of things that you come in contact with daily. And because I have clients who have an allergy to lanolin, it's one reason that none of the Quell skincare products contain lanolin. But you should be aware that some very popular brands use lanolin. For example, Aquaphor and Eucerin both contain lanolin. And I also have linked up in the show notes a detailed list of products that contain lanolin that's from the Environmental Working Group. And there's also a great commentary piece as well that I think you'd love to actually check out. Again, I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying lanolin is bad, but it could be something that makes things worse for someone with a lanolin allergy. Now, you probably don't know this, but there's a connection between lanolin and supplemental vitamin D. It's not something that's really easy to find out because lanolin isn't an allergen that's required to be listed on labels. And it explains why many supplements, such as multivitamins and vitamin D that's not derived from fish, aren't vegan supplements, since lanolin is derived from animals. 
So to be very clear, lanolin is a source of vitamin D oftentimes used by the supplement industry. So the problem here is actually vitamin D, not multivitamins in general. It's those that contain vitamin D that are derived from lanolin. And I came to learn this when I was working on my multivitamin formulation because I didn't understand why the final product wouldn't be vegan. Turns out the vitamin D available wasn't vegan because it was derived from lanolin. And so if you have a lanolin allergy, you have to look for a multivitamin if it contains vitamin D, as well as vitamin D supplements themselves that are explicitly marked vegan. Otherwise, you're consuming something with lanolin in it. Vegan vitamin D is commonly derived from algae or lichen. But don't be surprised if you find your options are more limited because there isn't a huge selection at this time to pick from and it may be a bit more expensive. And if you're working with a practitioner, please alert them about this issue with vitamin D since they might not even be aware of the lanolin vitamin D connection. And they may make suggestions to you of particular brands that have lanolin in it if you, for example, have a lanolin allergy. And that wouldn't be good. And remember, very few supplements will explicitly state that their vitamin D is from lanolin. So no matter what the practitioner says, if the supplement contains vitamin D and it's not marked vegan, there's a very good chance, probably pretty close to 100%, that it contains lanolin because that's where the vitamin D came from. And one final reminder, because I recognize that people listen to the Healthy Skin Show hoping to discover something that could be a part of their skin rash journey. I want you to keep in mind that I'm not saying that everyone has an allergy to lanolin or that you should be afraid that you have an allergy to it, nor that you need to avoid it if you do not have an allergy to it. I'm also not saying that vegan vitamin D is somehow better or not good as lanolin-derived vitamin D. There are simply different options for people who can tolerate different things. The idea behind this particular episode was to present you options so that you can make more informed choices and have a more informed conversation with your practitioners. Now, if you've got questions or thoughts to share on this particular episode, or you want to see all of the resources that I have linked up for you in the show notes here, because this is quite show note heavy this time around, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 229. That way we can keep the conversation going. If you know someone who's struggling with a lanolin allergy, or you might even suspect that this could be part of what's going on for them, please share this episode with them. And before you head off for your day, take a moment to rate and review The Healthy Skin Show and hit the subscribe button. That way you can tune in each week for the new tips, client stories, research, and inspiration as you travel on your journey to rebuild healthy skin. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.